Hello friends, how are you? So I hope you all are doing great. So finally the results of CA Intermediate and CA Foundation are out and sir, amazing results. Seriously, what are results? People have really proved themselves with their hard work and determination that what they can do, right? And one very important thing has happened that a common myth among the students that if some if some teacher is if some teacher is providing some free lectures or if some teacher is providing the lectures at a very low cost right those lectures will not be good that is a myth among many students right that myth has been absolutely shattered why i'm saying absolutely shattered sir are students who have used these free youtube lectures of cost accounting financial management and economics of finance they have scored not only exemptions they have scored 80 plus marks can you believe it 80 plus marks sir right along with the lectures it's their dedication it's their hard work that they have put in along with these lectures it's not only the lectures that have helped us it is their hard work and dedication that yes we want to achieve something and they have achieved it right with the minimum with the minimal of investment so what is important is what i'm trying to say is what is important is your intent not the amount that you are spending in coaching right if you say that if i will spend 10 15 thousand only then i will clear my exams or then i will score exemption that is not the case right the students with the minimal investment they are scoring 80 plus marks i'll give you a very simple example one very simple example sir yes uh, what we people can do is as teachers we can be the helping guide to you right what we can do is we can take your marks from 40 to 60 or 70 or 80 that is what our courses can help you to do but what is important is your intent to do right i'll give you a very simple example that why i'm saying taking marks from 40 to 60 or 70 uh, one of my students who subscribed for costing and financial management icai study material question discussion series right available on my website also available on my mobile app also why I'm saying again and again that this series is very important, sir. That student subscribed to both costing and FM series, but unfortunately, that student couldn't see the financial management series. That student completed the costing series, but couldn't see the financial management lectures, right? He or she subscribed to both the lectures, right? Unfortunately, uh, she couldn't clear both the groups, right? Neither group one, group two nor uh, group two she appeared for both the groups but couldn't clear it but that's fine it's not the end of the road what is important is to keep working hard with determination with intent now why i'm giving this example is that student scored 61 in cost accounting the only exemption in both the groups 61 in cost accounting and financial management uh, i think she's uh, scored somewhere around 40 40, 41, 42, some, somewhere around that. I have the mark sheet uh, with me. So that is the difference if you are subscribing to that course. That's why I always say that that's what difference it can make. But what is important is your intent. See the marks in costing from 40 to 60, 61, the highest marks in both the groups. That was the highest marks. And when I received the mail from her, uh, her I was uh, a little disappointed. She was also disappointed that she couldn't clear the group. But see the marks in costing, 61. The only exemption in both the groups, the highest marks in both the groups. And she told me that, sir, I couldn't complete uh, the financial management part, but I saw the costing lectures. I saw each and every costing ICI study material question discussion series, and it was worth it. A small investment can take you from 40s to 60s to 80s that's what and most of our students who got our handbooks who got this ICI study material they've scored 70 75 plus in costing and fm i mean brilliant result and that's why i say the myth that free lectures or the lectures being provided at low cost they are absolutely useless that myth has been absolutely shattered absolutely shattered sir now i'm happy about one thing that more and more people will come and they can make use of these lectures which are absolutely free of cost for all of you the whole course is there then what is the issue right still lot of people on telegram on social media they will keep criticizing you know these lectures are not good these are not see one thing never blame your uh, teacher for your failures 
right one thing is very if it is your success in your success also it is your hard work your intent that matters and in your failures also it is your hard work your intent that matters it is your mistake every teacher is good in their respect right what is important is you should also have the uh, intent the teacher has taught you 100 things if your intent is to learn only 10 things out of it then how can you expect to clear the exams right so your intent should be very clear your aim your sh goal should be very much clear why i'm taking this five seven minutes of you because this can really be uh, the changing times for you people keep that intent keep that fire in yourself that yes we want to do it you're getting lot of stuff on youtube free of cost uh, or uh, at a small investment whatever i'm providing i say study material only around thousand rupees but that can make a huge difference of around 20 30 marks but what is important is your intent that is why i'm saying again and again your intent your dedication your planning your hard work that matters and students have proved that and next is your turn to prove that that yes we can do it and there is no need to spend hefty amounts for it we can do it with the minimal investment we can do it by watching the lectures on the youtube but yes we had the intent and we have got the exemption you have you have to get the AIRs now right okay now coming back to the lecture what we were discussing about is overhead costing and in the overhead costing in the last lecture what we discussed was about the allocated overheads absorbed overheads and now we are moving on to the distribution and absorption of overheads which is one of the most important topics i will say right the whole chapter revolves around this distribution and absorption of overheads right so in the distribution and absorption just try to understand what we are going to do okay say this is your finished product okay this is your factory area this is your factory area i will divide it into four parts i will say p1 p2 s1 and s2 that means p1 and p2 are the production departments p1 and p2 are the production departments and these two are the service departments okay p1 p2 are the production department s1 s2 are the service department now the the here we have overheads which are the common overheads for all the departments i'm not saying about the allocated overheads i'm not talking about i am not talking about these overheads right what i am talking about is the absorbed overheads that is this 10000 electricity bill that is common for the whole factory right now what is my purpose of overhead costing sir my purpose of overhead costing is to identify these overheads in one unit of this finished good that means i have to make these overheads travel from this position to finished goods clear but what is the problem the problem here is i have two huge walls in between this is wall one and this is wall two that means i have two departments in between before i uh, reach make them reach to the fix, uh, finished good right clear so that means how to do it now try to understand what the question is the question says that you have to carry these overheads from this position p1 this position 1 to position 2 right you have to carry these overheads from position 1 to position 2 this is not production this is position 1 position 2 okay but the problem is there are two walls in between the wall one is the service department wall and the other wall is the production department now what should i do sir that is the confusion so what what is the first step in this is the first step says distribute these overheads among all the departments the first step is that distribute all the overheads among all the departments so that you move from this position to this position at least these overheads will now come inside the factory area which are now standing outside the factory these overheads will now come inside the factory and will be distributed among all these departments 
between P1, P2, S1 and S2. This distribution of overheads, this distribution of overheads is known as primary distribution. Right? So what is primary distribution is the distribution of overheads among all the departments respectively that is P1, P2, S1 and S2 clear because see these overheads have to travel a lot before they reach the finished goods right there are two walls S1 and S2 so to breach these walls the first step is to enter this particular factory area where all the departments are there so what over what we are doing is we are distributing the overheads among all the departments right so this is the first step called primary distribution now this is what i have told you about the basic of primary distribution now let's see how to do this primary distribution how this primary distribution is to be done see there are various steps okay in the primary distribution what is step one let's see step one distribute or i can say okay i'll say distribute total cost total direct cost total direct cost of what of what sir of service department see i have written this service department in capitals why sir the step one says distribute the total cost of service department sir what does it mean listen to it very carefully this is my finished good this is my factory area divided into say two parts divided into say two parts this is the production area this is the service area right this is canteen and this is the production area now listen to it very very carefully because this is one area where most of the students commit mistakes and you need to understand it very very carefully okay now what is production area where the whole production is taking place suppose you want to make a t-shirt in this production area there will be a cloth to make t-shirt there will be a cloth to make t-shirt right sir there will be a cloth to make t-shirt right now this cloth is what this cloth is what this is a direct material right this is a direct material what is direct material sir that means the finished good is t-shirt or a shirt right that means now the direct material of production department that is cloth this cloth will be there now only then the production will take place now this cloth is identifiable in one unit of finished product that means you can easily identify that how much of cloth is required for making one unit of t-shirt am i correct or not right we have done the basics of costing we have done material costing just i'm asking you a very simple question can you identify that in one unit of making t-shirt how much of cloth is identified uh, is used yes sir we can identify so it is a direct material in the chapter of overheads are we going to study about the direct material no sir this is not a part of overheads not a part of overheads right it is not a part of overheads because in the overheads what we take is only the indirect material indirect labor indirect expenses so this direct material which is directly identify uh, identifiable in one unit of finished product this is not a part of overheads right that is why i'm what i'm saying is the direct cost of only service department because the direct cost of production department is not a part of overheads that cost is already identified this cost of cloth is already identified in one unit of finished good if it is already identified in one unit of finished good then why i need to distribute as the overheads again that will be double counting no need of that right now coming to the service department say canteen 
ओके सो इन द कैंटीन डिपार्टमेंट से देर इज वन ब्रेड कटलेट देर इज वन ब्रेड कटलेट नाउ इन द मेकिंग ऑफ वन ब्रेड कटलेट द पर्सन हु इज मेकिंग दिस ब्रेड कटलेट ही नोज दैट इन दिस देर विल बी हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ पोटेटो यूज हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ पोटेटो विल बी रिक्वायर्ड फॉर मेकिंग दिस वन ब्रेड कटलेट ओके ना वट इज दिस हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ पोटेटो सर इट इज अ डायरेक्ट कॉस्ट फॉर सर्विस डिपार्टमेंट दिस इज अ डायरेक्ट कॉस्ट ऑफ सर्विस डिपार्टमेंट इज इंट इट बिकॉज सर्विस डिपार्टमेंट बिकॉज वी कैन क्लियरली आइडेंटिफाई दैट इन वन यूनिट ऑफ फिनिश्ड प्रोडक्ट दैट इज अ ब्रेड कटलेट फॉर कैंटीन डिपार्टमेंट हाउ मच ऑफ द रॉ मटीरियल विल बी यूज दैट इज हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ पोटेटो राइट सो इट इज अ डायरेक्ट कॉस्ट बट नाउ माई नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन लिसन टू इट वेरी केयरफुली कैन यू आइडेंटिफाई दैट इन मेकिंग ऑफ दिस टी शर्ट हाउ मच ऑफ दिस पोटेटो विल बी रिक्वायर्ड जस्ट टेल मी अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन आई एम आस्किंग that in the making of a t-shirt how much of the potato will be required can you tell me sir sir it is very difficult sir are potatoes used for making the t-shirt no is cloth used yes sir can you tell me the cloth yes sir can you tell me the potato no sir so that means this cost of potato which was a direct cost for the service department it becomes an indirect cost for the production department so i can write one thing i can write here one thing you can write this note direct cost direct cost of service department direct cost of service department is equal to indirect cost indirect cost of production department now in the chapter of overheads what we are going to take is we are going to take all the indirect cost so that means we will be considering this direct cost of service department while taking the distribution so that is the first step distribute the total direct cost of only service department direct cost of production department is not to be taken why sir because the direct cost of production department is already identifiable in one unit of finished product that is a direct cost and in the chapter of overheads what we are going to study is only indirect cost so then why we are taking the service department because you cannot identify that in making of this t-shirt how much potato is to be used that means the direct cost of service department you can identify in this bread cutlet but you cannot identify in this t-shirt right so the direct cost of service department is equal to the indirect cost of production department and what we need for overheads is the indirect cost clear so always remember this first step that you have to take only and only the direct cost of service department see uh, if any one of you will be solving that uh, practice manual or previous year question documents that are available on the ici website there you will find one question where what institute has done is they have distributed the direct cost of production department also so that is a wrong that is given wrongly in that document okay because uh, i have been getting lot of queries regarding that that is a wrong thing that they have uh, done there nothing to worry about sir even they are humans so humans can commit mistakes right so this is the step one that is distribute the direct cost of service department always remember this example that we can identify how much of cloth is required for one t-shirt but we cannot identify that how much of potato is required for one t-shirt right so the direct cost of service department why it is a direct cost of service department because the finished good of service department that is bread cutlet we can identify how much of potato is required for this bread cutlet right but it becomes an indirect cost for production department clear now coming to step number 2 what is step number 2 sir let's see what is step number 2 step number 2 is take all allocated overheads allocated overheads 
right sir what are allocated overheads which are identifiable with identifiable with individual departments which are individual departments right so i told you in the last lecture what are allocated overheads that's why we discussed about allocated and absorbed overheads in the last lecture so uh, the question says take allocated overheads it is to be taken for both for both production and service department because these are overheads the only thing is that these can be easily identified easily distributed between production and service department right like i told you in the last lecture there are separate electricity meters for all the departments so you can easily identify for individual department this these are the allocated overheads there is no direct indirect in this case what we are saying is overheads that means a direct cost but allocated that means those are easily identifiable with the individual department so first step is the direct cost of service department second step is that you have to take all the allocated overheads right for both production and service department now step 3 step 3 is distribute step 3 is distribute common overheads distribute common overheads on some on some reasonable basis so all those who are having the handbooks no need to write anything everything is given just relax just listen to it very carefully just try to understand the logics okay nothing to worry about it distribute the common overheads on some reasonable basis right now sir what are common overheads the common overheads are like we are having a common electricity meter for the whole of factory this 10000 this is my common overhead that means this overhead cannot be identified with the individual departments but the problem here is that i have to distribute this overhead what is the role of primary distribution the distribute this overhead among the different departments how and on what basis we have to distribute he says distribute it on some reasonable basis sir how this reasonable basis is identifiable what are the how we are going to identify that what is a reasonable base for any particular overhead right so for that i am going to discuss i am going to give you one list of overheads and what can be a reasonable base for that right see that is not an exhaustive list practically saying that is not an exhaustive list but yes that will cover 95% of your overheads that can be asked in the practical questions right reasonable basis means what you think according to your judgment is reasonable right for the distribution of that overhead for example for example i'll take a very simple example say electricity say this is electricity there is an electricity bill of say 10000 rupees now you want to distribute this 10000 rupees right you have various factors in front of you uh, the one is number of lights and fans number of lights and fans right the second factor is the first factor is number of lights and fans uh, second factor is number of uh, employees right now on what basis you will distribute this 10000 on the basis of lights and fans who consumed the electricity these lights and fans consumed the electricity or the employees consumed the electricity this electricity bill of 10000 came because the light and fans were there or because the employees were there what do you think is the reasonable uh, base obviously sir this light and fans is the reasonable base for this 10000 how can you distribute it on the basis of number of employees in a factory there are no lights and fans right but the employees are working during the day time say a hypothetical situation will there be an electricity bill sir without lights and fans how can there be an electricity bill no right so this is how you need to identify that what is going to be a reasonable base i'll give you a list i'll give you a list don't worry about it that is not the exhaustive list that means that is not the end of the list 
right? What I'm going to give you is 12, 13 points I'm going to give you. But that is not something that the question will be asked from their own leaser. No. The overheads will be asked from their own leaser. No. It will depend upon your judgment at that time. Clear? But it should be a reasonable base. It shouldn't look like that you have selected anything and everything. Right? The judgment means a reasonable judgment. It should be a reasonable judgment. Right? Okay. Now, for this, uh, we are going to discuss a few examples. Right? That what are the few examples? What can be the reasonable basis for that? Let's see. So I have taken a few examples. I'm going to take examples of common overheads and their reasonable expenses. The first overhead is related to factory building, right? Now, what can be the overheads related to this factory building? What can be the overhead? See, there are two scenarios. This factory building can be owned, right? That means you are the owner of that building or this factory building can be rented. Right, that means you're paying the rent. What can be the various overheads if you own this factory building? Sir, one is the depreciation. Obviously, if you are the owner, you can claim depreciation. You will read it in the income tax also, right? Then you will obviously do the insurance of your building, sir. Obviously, from fire, theft, everything from damage, you will do the insurance also. You will pay the insurance premium. That is also your overheads. Now, all these overheads are to be recovered from your customer. I've given you a tagline. What? all overheads except abnormal overheads are to be recovered from your customer right then there can be repairs to the building so all these are what overheads if you are if you are in a rented accommodation what then what will be that rent will be there rent rates and taxes right you might be paying uh, the corporation tax the municipal corporation tax for that building if you are the owner even in that case you will might be paying in the rented case also you might be having the agreement with the landlord that will pay the taxes will be the taxes uh, then you the repairs and maintenance can be there obviously sir right then cleaning expenses can be there so all these are what all these are overheads related to factory building if you have owned it or if you have rented it Right now, what is a reasonable base? What is a reasonable base for it, sir? Just think of it. Just think of it. Just think of it, sir. Say you have a building, you have a factory building of say this much area. Okay, whatever it is. And you have a factory building of say this much area. Now you're getting the insurance done for this area also you're getting the insurance done for this area also just think logically right just think very calmly that which building will ask for a great uh, a greater premium you will pay a premium of say 10000 rupees for this building now will you pay the same premium for this Will you pay the same premium for this? The insurance company will say because the area of this factory is large, will charge you more premium, will charge you 20,000 for this. Why? Because in this huge area, their risk is also more. So on what basis they have decided this premium? On what basis they have decided this premium? Sir, on the basis of floor area, right? Another example, say you want to have a garden in this whole area, right? And you want to have a garden on this whole, whole area, right? The making of which garden will cost you more? Just very simple. You want to make a garden here, you want to make a garden here. Just tell me one thing that which garden will uh, ask you for more cost? The maintenance or the setting up of which garden will be costly sir obviously this will be costly why sir because the area is more right bigger the area higher the expenses obviously sir right so that means in this case the reasonable base can be floor area right that means in how much area your factory building is there clear 
now some of you might be thinking sir how to do this in the practical examples we'll do the practical example so just stay calm don't panic don't worry we'll cover each and everything in detail don't worry right so this is the first example that is factory building second light expenses light expenses sir what is light expenses you can say similar to electricity expenses electricity bill sir it will depend upon the number of lights you have or the number of wide area that you have in the factory obviously if you in a home just imagine a situation in your home you are staying at an accommodation where you have just two fans and two lights that's it and imagine another situation where you are living in an accommodation where you have five fans 10 lights two ac whose bill will be more sir obviously the accommodation where i have more number of light points where i have more lights more fans more ac the electricity bill of that accommodation will be more than the earlier accommodation where i have only two fans two lights that's it a simple logic right so that means this will depend upon number of light points now sir what if this number of light points is not given to us in the question sir is there any other area which we can take the another area that you can take is floor area floor area say for example in this factory in this factory you require four lights and five fans right now what about this factory sir because this factory has a larger area you will require more number of lights and more fans say here you require eight lights and 10 fans whose electricity bill will be higher whose electricity bill will be higher sir obviously the one having the more floor area so it will depend upon the question first preference will be number of light points if you have it in the question right so the first preference will be number of light points if you have that in the question if the number of light points is not given then you can take floor area right next indirect material cost that is the cost of material which cannot be identified in one unit of finished product so distribute it in the ratio of direct material cost direct material cost will be given to you in the question so in that ratio you have to distribute this indirect material cost between production and service department right sir what about indirect labor cost what can be the indirect labor cost it can be employers contribution to esi pf gratuity pension because all these things have nothing to do with the number of units being produced all these things are just a percentage on the salary salary is something which we calculate we might calculate on the number of units being produced or the number of hours being spent but these units have nothing to do with that right so this is my indirect labor cost how to distribute it this is to be distributed upon the direct wages so you will be given the direct wages on those basis you can distribute this indirect labor cost okay any doubts clear next timekeeping expenses supervision charges canteen charges human resource expenses and employee welfare expenses so these are the few expenses so timekeeping type time what is timekeeping expenses are recording the incoming and outgoing time of the employees that how much hours the an employee has spent supervision charges the supervision is done whether an employee is working fine or not whether he's sitting idle without any reason what he is doing he is doing the work, uh, work in the right direction or not canteen charges who will take the benefit of canteen sir machineries will go in the canteen and eat the food or employees will go in the canteen or eat the food sir obviously machineries will go and employees will work right isn't it sir employees will go in the canteen eat food have tea coffee cold drink anything they want right what is human resource expenses human resource expenses is all those expenses which are incurred in hiring the employees in managing the employees right so i i may have a human resource department who is involved in hiring the new workers right who is involved in 
you know taking all the matters related to employees or workers next employee welfare expenses like diwali gifts or any other occasional gifts which can be given to the workers so these are uh, any other welfare expenses can be there so one thing you can see in all these things is what is common time keeping supervision canteen in all these expenses i have used one common word which is that common words are employ 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 and employ right so that means all these expenses are related to employees so what we are going to take is number of employees so these expenses can be distributed on the basis of number of employees right next next i have motive par what is motive par what is motive par motive par is the power used the power used in running machines used or i can say consumed when the machines are working now on on what basis i can distribute it i can distribute it on the basis of kilowatt hours kilowatt hours that what is the capacity of that machine or for how many hours that machine is being run or i can say horse power hours this is quite common horse power hours right or power consumed right or i can say horse power of machinery horse power of machinery that is this horse power of machinery can be calculated in what way it can be horse power per hour that is the power that is being consumed by the machinery in 1 hour multiplied by number of machine hours that is for the number of hours the machine is running that is called horse power of machine that if a machine is running for 8 hours how much of the power that machine is going to consume in those 8 hours right now cost of crane or the forklift truck what is a crane or a forklift truck can anyone tell me what is a crane or a forklift truck see uh, in some of the factories there are huge areas right so move the material to move the material from one area to another area they use a crane or a small truck kind of a thing that is a forklift truck that is the function of that forklift truck is to lift the material from one area and drop the material to another area right sir what can be the expenses uh related to it or what can be the cost related to it there can be various cost which can be related to it like such so depreciation if we are owning this crane or the forklift truck we are the owner of it we can claim depreciation on it right then we'll need a driver to obviously drive this crane and or the truck we'll be paying him the salary that is driver salary will be there right then repairs cost will be there isn't it obviously this crane or the forklift truck might require uh, might require the repairs also the repairs cost will be there so what can be the reasonable base for distribution that will be technical estimate that will be technical estimate of hours of hours devoted to each department right so that means how much hours have been devoted by these persons or by this service to each department that will be on the basis of that right that will be given in the question nothing to worry about it next manager salary sir manager salary see a manager can be uh, supervising or managing all the departments multiple departments so how to divide his salary among the various departments that will be on the basis of number of hours devoted to each department number of hours devoted that how much hours he has devoted that is also on the estimate basis only because we can't identify because in a factory there are four departments he is running from one department to second second to third third to fourth so we cannot correctly estimate right how much hours he has spent so it is on the estimate basis that he has given so much hours in one factory so that should be uh, on distributed on that basis okay 
plant and machinery i'll coming it later on first material handling or the carrying cost what is material handling that means carrying the material from one place to another what is carrying cost sir like the down is there where you have to carry the raw material right so on what basis this cost can be distributed this will be distributed on the basis of weight of material transferred weight of material transferred that is how much material you have transferred from one place to another right material handling how much of the material you have handled what is the weight of that you have handled right sir simply say you go to a vegetable market right you buy 10 kg apple and you buy 20 kg apple so the cost will be depending upon the weight that you carry that you handle right that you carry if you are carrying the 10 kg the price will be of 10 kg if you are carrying 20 kg the price will be of 20 kg sir who is going to carry those 10 and 20 kg anyhow that was just an example don't worry or if the weight is not given then value of direct material then value of direct material clear last general miscellaneous or sundry expenses this you have to identify on the basis given in the question it can be on the basis of uh, direct wages right it can be on the basis of labor hours right it can be on the basis of machine hours if your these expenses are more or less related to machine then we can say it is machine hours if they are more or less related to labor then we can distribute it on the basis of labor hours right so this should be a subject to an explanatory note subject to subject to an explanatory note that is what you have to do is in the question you have to give a note that on this basis we are distributing this sundry expenses okay now coming to plant and machinery so plant and machinery is similar to what we did in the factory building that means this plant and machinery can be owned by you or it can be rented if you own this plant and machinery what can be the various overhead sir again depreciation will be there repair and maintenance of this plant and machinery will be there right again insurance will be there insurance premium will be there right if it is rented then what about rent of machinery can be there rent of machinery will be there repairs cost can be there now on what basis sir on the basis of floor area floor area sir on the basis of the size of machinery size of machinery are you going to measure at the machinery no sir then on what basis on what basis sir you have machine one say you have two machines in your factory right machine one and machine two the cost of machine the value of this machine is say 1 cr 1 crore and the value of this machine 2 uh, is say 5 lakhs right now just tell me the insurance premium of which machine will be higher the risk of which machine is higher just simply put that forget about insurance premium just simply put that the risk of damage of which machine will be higher sir simply say you are carrying an iphone right costing 1 lakh rupees and you are carrying a nokia phone old nokia 1100 phone say just about 1000 1500 rupees right now the risk is involved in which of the phone if an insurance uh, company comes to you that sir we want to insure your phone which phone will you insure first you are ready to pay the premium for nokia 1100 or you are ready to pay the premium for iphone sir obviously i am ready to pay the premium for iphone why because the value of that phone is 1 lakh rupees if it gets damaged i will lose 1 lakh rupees sir why not nokia 1100 sir that is just 1000 rupees even if it gets damaged it's okay fine sir right so what is the consideration here the value of that asset is important right you have a 1 crore thing and you have a 5 lakh thing obviously you will give the more importance you will give uh, more priority to that machine which is 1 cr 
so what is the main consideration here is the value of that plant and machinery right so the consideration here is value of plant and machinery any doubts so this is a small list that I have given you it is given in my handbooks right this is not an exhaustive list that means this is not the end of overheads right so there can be overheads beyond this also okay this is just an uh, some examples that I have taken up and what can be the reasonable ways related to th uh, this I have taken up right 90% of the overheads will be covered from within this list when you will get a question on that okay 90% will be covered 10% can be there uh, any other overheads can be there so this is few examples so have you got the basic logic behind primary distribution three steps the first is the direct cost of only and only service department is to be taken the production department direct cost is not to be taken because that is not a overhead right why direct cost of service department I've explained you you cannot identify what quantity of potato is required for t-shirt right so it becomes an indirect cost for the finished good second is to take all the allocated overheads that is overheads which are easily identifiable with the one department third is distribute common overheads on some reasonable basis right how to distribute it what are the reasonable basis I have given you this list clear any doubts okay sir we'll end this lecture here and in the next lecture what we are going to do is we are going to do two practical problems uh, first I'll show you the format how to do it I'll tell you the format and then we will be attempting two practical problems on this primary distribution only right we'll not move forward to secondary distribution uh, we'll discuss about the primary distribution the motive of primary distribution should be clear that I have explained you that is distribute these overheads among all these departments because we have to take these overheads to finished goods but there are two walls in between so first we are going to get into these two walls right the production department wall service department wall so the first step is to distribute the overheads among all the departments so that we can reach this finished goods still there is a long journey before we reach this finished goods the primary distribution is distribution of overheads among all the departments right this is the basic motive of it right clear so guys with this we end this lecture right whatever I have told you in the beginning of the lecture that is very very important listen to it carefully just uh, keep those things in mind that what you have to do your intent should be very clear that yes we want to be a chartered accountant yes we want to be a professional whatever course you are doing right that is very important your intent your in, uh, hard work matters a lot what we as the tutors can do is take your marks from 40 to 60 or 80 with some courses that's what our role is right we can guide you we can show you some path with our courses uh, with some knowledge that we have right we can share that with you people but yes that can take your marks from 40 to 60 or 80 I've given you a live example one of the students you know got 61 because the lectures she watched and 40 because the lectures she missed that's it that's the difference okay Okay guys, see you guys in the next lecture. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you so much.